Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the lecture two of the series of kinematics of machines. Uh, today we will be discussing some uh, very basics again and uh, it will be continuing from where we had left off in the last lecture. So if those of you who have not seen the last lecture, I would urge you to go back and uh, see the kinematics of machines lecture one and then come to this one. Yeah, so let's move forward. So today we will be discussing upon uh, what exactly is a kinematic link? What is a kinematic pair? And how can we classify kinematic link and kinematic pair? And also we'll be seeing how to draw uh, a kinematic uh, pair, how to represent a kinematic link actually. So that also we'll see today. So let's go forward. Uh, so first things first, what is a kinematic link? Now this term comes across so much time, so many times in uh, the design subjects that after a point of time it is it is hard for the students to ask to the faculty what exactly is a kinematic so because the, the faculty also will get get irritated at last so it is it will it must be difficult for you so uh, do you try to remember kinematic link is as a rigid body okay it is, it is a rigid body which is a part of the kinematic chain whole kinematic chain which transfers motion that is all so a kinematic link or an element is nothing but one one element one one uh, rigid body rigid body now rigid body when i say uh, what i mean by that is uh, a body which does not undergo appreciable transformation while transmitting motion so when when a motion is being transmitted it should not undergo that much amount of a uh, Ideally, it should not undergo, but actually there is no rigid body. Ideally, there are no rigid bodies. Even steel undergoes a little bit of deformation. However, it is not uh, much appreciable uh, uh, and it always returns to its original position. So we can consider it as a rigid body. Okay. So uh, ideally, there are no rigid bodies. However, in kinematics of machines, we consider all the elements as rigid bodies. Yes, so moving forward. Now uh, here uh, you can see I have put a slider crank mechanism for your reference. So over here you can see first link is the frame, frame or the base, a fixed link. Now mostly I've seen students, they skip this part. The frame they uh, forget to count as one link. So always remember whatever the, the link is, whatever the uh, whole mechanism is fixed upon, that must be considered as one link. Okay, that is the most important uh, factor to consider while uh, counting the number of links because this will be this is useful and it is very important step while we go later on into the topics because if you miscount the number of links that are there then uh, your whole problem will go wrong now second one is a crank now mostly all most of the cases we name the fixed link as one always name the fixed link as one that is a convention that we follow Second is crank, third is a connecting rod and fourth is a slider. Now here, for a slider crank mechanism, you can easily relate it to your uh, IC engine uh, piston cylinder arrangement. So the cylinder piston in the uh, IC engine can be considered as a slider. The connecting rod is uh, can be considered as a link number three. And the crank shaft of yours can be considered as uh, crank and your cylinder or your whole uh, whole engine uh, it can be considered as your frame. Okay, so that is the most uh, easy example that comes to your mind whenever you think of slider crank mechanism. Whereas it has so many more applications, so many uh, other places also, it is the same concept can be applied. Now, moving forward, uh, I had told you that we'll learn how to represent a kinematic link uh, properly. So over here, you can see uh, the uh, the first mechanism. Now over here, the, the first one, I'll just number it over here. In the first one, as you can see, uh, there is a slider. This this is a slider, which I can name it as four. This is a fixed frame. This whole part is a fixed frame. So I can I can number it as one. Okay, and this is, is a link. And on to this link, I have one another link attached over here. Right, so on to the slider. So over here on the right side, you can see the proper kinematic representation of this uh, this machine over here. 
so in on the right side if you if you look at it the kinematic link the link uh, this i can number it as uh, two and uh, slider is numbered as three and uh, this uh, is numbered as four four i can number it as this uh, link separately so over here if you look at it properly the handle handle is coupled at two places two places okay so that is a binary link actually it is a binary link okay now we'll come to it we'll come to what all kinds of links are there later in the next slide but i just wanted to you know show you how to represent kinematically now if you look at the kinematic representation it is nothing like what uh, the actual figure is usually students get confused you know how to represent a link kinematically a link need not be uh, uh, like a straight line in actual it can also be a, a, a disc okay a crankshaft as i told you a crankshaft right now crankshaft shape is different from that of a straight line right but still we represent it as a uh, as a single line in in our slider crank mechanism which we saw in the previous slide so just keep and keep that into your uh, mind so over here you can see this uh, link over here it is represented like this because it is getting coupled at two places so these are the two places it are it is getting coupled and from here one link which is connecting to the slider so here i have slider and which is sliding over my first link even this is connected to my first link that is a uh, kinematic representation of the same now in a similar way the wrench uh, can be represented so the bigger part of the wrench is the fixed link okay the, so the, that is the fixed link or uh, here they have mentioned it as uh, uh, same link number one so here the why they have mentioned it at, in two places two different places they can also consider it, uh, it as a single line right why they have considered it as two different a and d there also in the first figure also you can see a and uh, c and uh, a two different places they have put the slider that is mainly because to indicate where the link is coming and getting coupled to so those two places are not exactly in the same line right that is why it is uh, they have put it at two different places even though they have put it at two different places it is actually uh, same link same frame okay, one fixed frame so over here i have the one fixed frame over here from here uh, one link is uh, coming and getting coupled to another one link okay now here this link also is having two uh, places that it is getting coupled to here also it is getting coupled to another one fixed link so here this is one this is also one and uh, i can name this as two this is three and this is four so there are four links over here okay so um yeah that is how you can do the kinematic representation of a link so moving forward what is a kinematic pair now kinematic pair is uh, a joint of two links having relative motion between them so two links are there that are joined together and they have a relative motion between them now what is the best example i can show you kinematic link now you see my arm is a kinematic uh, pair okay this is a kinematic pair so i have my uh, uh, arm this part and this part from the elbow it is joined over here so i can move it there is a relative motion between them that is an example for kinematic pair even the uh, shoulder joint of mine it's a ball and socket joint this is a good example for a kinematic pair so my body and the arm is a good kinematic pair okay, it is having a relative motion between them right that is uh, one example that i can give you so let us see now how uh, a kinematic link is classified so how we can classify kinematic link now we, uh, how what is, what do you mean by actually this classification now if there are a couple of uh, uh, hundred students in a class now i can classify them based on umpteen number of criteria right so i can maybe uh, classify them based on uh, good learners slow learners medium learner, learners i can maybe classify them based on uh, those who are having good height small ones short, uh, medium ones right so there are 
umpteen number of uh, uh, criteria based on which we can classify anything. So here, what we have taken for kinematic link is, uh, I have uh, we have classified it based on how many uh, nodes are there in one link, or how many turning pairs can be placed on to one link, and uh, also based on its physical nature. Okay. So let us first see how we can classify them based on the uh, number of turning pairs that can be attached to them or number of nodes that are there basically on one link. So um, depending on the number of uh, turning pairs can be that can be placed, I can classify a kinematic link into three. First one is uh, binary, which means it is having two nodes okay, or two, two places it can be coupled to. Then I have ternary link. Ternary link means it can be coupled at three places. Three places it can be coupled at, as you can see in the figure over here. Right. So here you can see binary link, ternary link, and quaternary link. So the quaternary link we can couple it at four different places. Okay. So here you can see nodes. This one, this one, and this one. Three places it can be coupled at a ternary link. Now it need not be necessarily be a triangle, but when we represent it kinematically, it or it is usually represented as a triangle that is a ternary link. Even the binary link need not be a straight line or a, a shaft. It can be a circle also, right? Or any of these figures can be a circle also. But uh, since it is uh, kinematically how it is represented that we have shown over here. Now even for quaternary link, what it is? four places it can be uh, coupled to. Right, now moving on, what is the other classification? What is the other criteria? That is depending upon the physical nature. So depending upon the physical nature, I can classify a kinematic link as rigid link, flexible link, and fluid link. Now, what do you mean by rigid link? As I told you earlier, a rigid link is nothing but which, a link which does not undergo any appreciable deformation when while transmitting motion. So here you see a connecting rod. A connecting rod can is is not having any appreciable deformation, right? But still, while transmitting motion, there is a slight deformation which will happen in all the materials, but it is not an appreciable one. So there is no ac actual rigid body, but uh, you know, we in kinematics we consider most of it as rigid bodies. So uh, what happens to a flexible link? Flexible link means while transmitting motion, it acts as a rigid body. Uh, it, it stretches and it transmits motion, which is a chain uh, for your bike. You have your bike, your uh, chain drive is a uh, flexible link. And uh, maybe for, if you are having Harley Davidson, you have a belt drive. Belt is a flexible link. Rope is a flexible link. Right. Uh, then we have what fluid link now what is fluid link fluid link is nothing but uh, when when we use fluid to transmit a motion how uh, where does it happen what comes to your mind right when we say that uh, as i have given here in the figure the typical hydraulic brakes right so when the driver is applying a brake uh, the fluid is being transmitted into all the wheels and the brake pad is getting applied in all the places because of the fluid that is being uh, fluid is transmitting the motion over in this case the so fluid is acting as a kinematic link right so moving on classification of kinematic pair now what how how can we classify kinematic pair now same uh, on the basis of nature of contact, on the basis of relative motion and mechanical constraints, I can classify uh, the kinematic pair into different, uh, different, different pairs. So uh, uh, let us see what each of those are. So based on the nature of contact of kinematic pair, I can classify them as lower pair and higher pair. Now what is a lower pair? Lower pair means it is having a point, a uh, surface contact. Lower pair, pair has a surface contact always. So here you can see the example, a screw, screw which is uh, rotate, screw is moving on a nut. Okay, so over here, this when the screw moves on the nut, 
all the surface inside that screw is touching the all the surface of this uh, nut so that is called as a lower pair okay the whole surface surface contact is there higher pair higher pair is what higher pair is when the uh, a point contact or a line contact is there similar to that in a cam okay in a cam what happens cam rotates and the follower is there so the cam pushes the follower and all at the all the time it is both of these are in contact with each other so that is what i have shown in the second figure over here a cam and follower so here the cam and follower is a good example for a higher pair so what is a higher pair higher pair is when a point contact or a line contact is there and a lower pair is when surface contact is there now most of the cases the students they uh, do it ulta because they remember it like lower pair yeah lower means point or line contact okay? higher means surface contact so then you mess it up so don't remember it like that lower pair is where you have surface contact and higher pair is where you have uh, point or line contact so try to remember it hope you don't mess it up yes so uh, let us move on let us move on to our uh, relative uh, motion now based on relative motion that is happening between the links we can classify them into sliding pair rolling pair turning pair screw pair and spherical pair now let us take the first one into consideration sliding pair so sliding pair uh, what is uh, what is a good example for a sliding pair as i have given in the figure a piston and cylinder best example for a sliding pair piston is sliding inside the cylinder is there ic engine cylinder is there piston is sliding inside the cylinder that is a very good example for a sliding pair that comes to your mind any, any mechanical engineer automatically that is the uh, that should come to your mind so what might be a good example for a sliding pair let us see the door the sliding door now you see this is a sliding pair. The frame, the ground, and the door is a sliding pair. Rolling pair. Rolling pair means what? Uh, uh, a ball, ball is rolling. Uh, so, a ball bearing, as you can see over there, ball bearings are a good example for a rolling pair. Now this is a platform that is used to design cakes. This top surface rotates but in this one stays stable so here what we have here in between we have a here we have a ball bearings inside over here as you can see ball bearings inside. oops ball bearings and turning pair now what is turning pair turning pair is the most uh, common uh, type of links that are there as you can see i have put up a figure turning pair is now this elbow of mine now elbow and uh, uh, this is the turning pair actually see i can turn it this so that this is a turning pair now this is a turning pair see this joint it is a turning pair okay. mm. yeah so another example for turning pair scissors turning pair screw pair screw pair is what screw pair is nothing but a screw turn, turning on a nut Okay, that is a uh, screw pair. Now, what can I show you for screw pair? Something which turns like a screw. Hmm. Nothing comes to my mind. Screw pair. Mm. 
maybe in next video spherical pair is one uh, um socket is there and one ball will be there inside that my shoulder can be called as a spherical pair um yes so we saw all the examples now moving on to our uh, kinematic pair based on mechanical constraints now based on mechanical constraints i can uh, classify it into two one is unclosed pair one is closed pair unclosed pair means nothing but it is all now as you can see this is a cam and follower cam and follower where is where the follower is pushed to uh, pushed by gravity or because of a spring to be attached at, at all the time to the cam okay it is an open follower if you remove the spring there is no no i can remove the spring and i can remove the follower at any time that i want but whereas in the case of a second figure you can see a closed pair closed pair means if i have to dismantle it no i have to completely dismantle the whole uh, stuff from there so without breaking it you will not be able to dismantle it so that is what is there in the closed pair yes so thank you uh, like share and subscribe for more videos and um, i'll be seeing you in the next one as a for continuation in lecture 3 thank you